Thanks a lot for having me. Um, so, this paper deals with uh, the, the early 19th century collection history by focusing on a private collection, on a private library, that of the German Orientalist Julius Klaproth. Um, the early 19th century is considered as a critical uh, period uh, for the global history of Orientalism due to a series of uh, changes of, of, on different levels that uh, take place uh, during this period. The creation of empires, the emergence of a new, uh, parad the new paradigm of um, uh, historical and uh, comparative uh, philology and the process of uh, specialization. Uh, through the study of these key figures, this paper aims at uh, historicizing the acquisition pro process and the construction of uh, Oriental collections in Europe, adopting an approach at the intersection of the sociocultural history of knowledge and the study of uh, global circulation. Indeed, the thematic of the collection building presents a particular interest because it allows to examine knowledge circulation through the lens of materialities. So, uh, after some biographical uh, information, I will talk about my sources, then I will present uh, Klaproth's library, giving some insights on the rates of uh, his interest and his uh, motivation. And uh, finally, I will try to identify the categories of actors and practices of acquisition while mapping the collection networks. Some biographical elements to start with. Julius Klaproth was born in 1783 in Berlin as the son of the famous chemist Martin Heinrich, Heinrich Klaproth, who would be the first holder of the chair of chemistry at the newly founded University of Berlin in 1810. Klaproth was an uh, autodidact in Chinese since the age of uh, 14 and uh, subsequently learned several other uh, languages. He has uh, studied in um, Halle for one year in 1802, uh, but he says that he was uh, rather bored there. Uh, so the next year uh, he was appointed at the Academy of Science of uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, while in uh, Russia, he took part in Count Golovkin's embassy to China, made the stay in Siberia and Central Asia, and undertook a scientific mission in the Caucasus. Uh, he studied several uh, local uh, languages and uh, even the Japanese uh, when uh, he was in Irkutsk in um, 1805. Uh, his teacher was a Japanese um, named Shinzo, uh, Russified Nikolai Kolodikin, who was a professor at the language uh, school of uh, Irkutsk. In 1815, Klaproth uh, settled in Paris uh, uh, until his, uh, his death, uh, where he got involved in the foundation of the Société Asiatique and uh, published uh, extensively. Um, since, since we are here, I, will, uh, I would like to add that Klaproth has published in 1822 a catalogue of the Chinese and Manus Manchu manuscripts of the Royal uh, Library of uh, Berlin. And um, beside his reputation as a scholar, Klaproth was a well-known collector and his private library, sold at auction in 1840, contains a significant number of Oriental manuscripts. The catalog of uh, Klaproth's library, in view of this, prepared in, the, in view of this auction, is published in 1839 by the Parisian bookseller Merlin. Um, this is one of, the, of my sources for uh, today's paper. And um, this paper also draws on a part of uh, Klaproth's writings and uh, his extensive correspondence, edited in part by Hartmut uh, Valer Evans. Um, however, a substantial part of his correspondence remains unpublished. Um, I have uh, discovered uh, during my research here uh, around 50 manuscripts in different uh, uh, German libraries. Uh, but um, 
uh, the um, most substantial part uh, of his uh, correspondence uh, is preserved uh, at the um, archives of the Russian Academy of Science, where I have not been able to work yet uh, due to the, because of the political situation. Uh, Klapper's collection contains almost uh, 2,000 titles. In order to better seize the meaning of uh, this number, I have established a comparison with a collection of other contemporary Orientalist scholars, also sold in, at auction some years before or after uh, Klapper's library. The richest collection is uh, that of Sylvester de, de Sassy, contain, containing about 6,000 titles, that is three times more than Klapper's one. The collection built uh, by Langless or Hammer are also larger, counting more than um, 4,000 tithes. Nonetheless, Klapper's library is more generous than the collections of other important scholars of his generation, such as uh, Abel Remuja and Saint Martin. Of course, uh, we should consider also the um, uh, such uh, parameters as the economic situation or the age of uh, the collectors. Uh, since in general, the 19th, in the 19th, uh, during the 19th century, the conditions of uh, housing and the uh, fortunes are less favorable uh, for the collectors than in, previous, uh, in the previous century. And uh, um, since uh, some scholars, uh, such as uh, Belle Remusia and uh, Saint Martin, died in a young age during to the cholera pandemic of 1832. The classification in the catalog is made by the bookseller. Uh, the two dominant series are literature and history, and inside this series, the linguistics and the modern history of Asia. Uh, Klapros Library, however, reflects the wide uh, range uh, of his interests, uh, as he, is, he was also a linguist, ethnographer, historian, geographer, and cartographer. It contains numerous and precious material on different Asiatic countries. In particular, the part of the collection concerning the Caucasus, Russia, and Central Asia was the most complete, which had uh, until then been presented at auction. Now, the relatively high number, the rarity of the Oriental part of Klapper's collection, uh, that is in original characters, uh, prompt the bookseller to dedicate to, to it a separate section in the catalog. And uh, it is important to note uh, here that uh, this is the only example among the catalogs that I have examined where a separate section is dedicated to books and manuscripts in uh, oriental characters. This part of the catalog has been entrusted to the French orientalist Landres. So, Glabro's collection contains 290 oriental books and manuscripts, especially Chinese, Manchu, and Japanese. The richest categories, again, literature, in particular dictionaries and grammars, followed by history, geography, and the Asiatic, uh, Asiatic religions. Books and manuscripts are represented together, uh, right in the relevant thematic uh, category. Uh, how, however, um, Landres notes uh, when the title is a manuscript, uh, as he gives uh, anyway historical notes for uh, almost all the titles of the, of the catalog. So, returning to yesterday's uh, discussion, I would like to say that, in, in my opinion, it is uh, anachronistic to project uh, our uh, current uh, vision of uh, view of uh, manuscript to previous uh, centuries. Um, and um, for the early 19th century, for, for instance, uh, I, I think that uh, uh, there was more, the scholars were more interested in uh, the organization and, uh, of knowledge and the classification in uh, the relevant categories than um, in uh, presenting uh, separately the, the manuscripts and uh, the, the prints. And uh, as for the uh, value of uh, manuscripts, it could be interesting to study their prices uh, compared, compared to, to the books, to the book uh, prices. And uh, this is actually possible because some copies uh, of uh, auction catalogs contain handwritten notes with uh, indicating the prices. Um, 
So we count 58 Oriental manuscripts in Clapper's library, that is about 20% of this part of the catalog. Furthermore, the collection includes some boxes containing several documents in original characters. These manuscripts are uh, religious works, mostly on Taoism, Chinese documents, including several catalogs of books, notices, political instructions, documents on politics, jurisprudence, uh, administration, treatises on science and arts, historical, historical works, and in particular, a remarkable Manchu manuscript entitled The, the Banners of uh, the Kalka Tribe. And uh, the richest uh, category is that of the literary, uh, literary works. It contains Chinese, Manchu, Mongolian, and Japanese dictionaries, uh, uh, syllabaries, vocabularies, other texts, and several grammatical works and dictionaries made also by Europeans. Um, and uh, in, in, indeed, there are some other works uh, by Europeans, uh, mostly by uh, missionaries and um, manuscript notes and uh, observations by scholars in Russia, some of whom had done field work in uh, Siberia and Central Asia. So uh, now I don't uh, expect you to read this, but this is the catalog of the manuscripts. And um, it could be... Um, uh, so I have no manuscripts to, to show you, uh, but it could be interesting to undertake uh, research on the localization of these manuscripts, uh, to examine whether they have uh, been acquired by institutions or uh, individuals. And the line of research is the study in the archives uh, in France, where I uh, preserved the actionaries' registers and um, we know the name of uh, the person who was responsible for uh, Clavus Library. It was, he was uh, named uh, Massier. Um, the constitution of a collection may have different motives and may serve different purposes. It is often made a distinction between a scholar's library considered as a work tool and an abundance library associated to bibliophily. However, however, such a distinction is not applicable in Clapper's case. His library served his work, of course, especially since at the beginning of his studies in Germany, he lacked the resources for the study of Oriental languages. But contrary to other scholars, such as Sylvester de Sassy, Klaproth also took a keen interest in curiosities and in the material aspects of the works, and was also fond of rarities which would embellish uh, his collection. Uh, the function of a lab library as an asset is uh, obvious in the case of the sale after the owner's death, but also when facing financial difficulties. For instance, in such um, an occasion, Klaproth proposed to the Prussian minister Altestein that the king of Prussia purchases uh, 138 volumes of Chinese Manchu and Manchu works for one of the state libraries. Klaproth implements different strategies in order to overpass the constraints, forging a large ne network of exchanges and combining a wide range of acquisition practices. While at the beginning of his career, his engagement in local cultures was direct, later the process of collection was mediated by suppliers who had or had not entanglements within local cultures. Klaproth's uh, appointment in Russia is part of a pattern of mobility common to German scholars since the early 18th century. In addition to a career option, the, the Russian expansion in Asia was opening an attractive field for research. Indeed, during his mission in Central Asia and the Caucasus, Klaproth seized the opportunity to conduct field research while acquiring material for his personal collection and for the academy, according to the uh, instructions he had received. Besides manuscripts, he acquires coins, other antiquities, and minerals. He uses the local networks forged by the Russian authorities in the context of imperial expansion, in particular in the Caucasus, where during his stay, Russia was in war both against Persia and the Ottoman Empire. 
he has official recommendations addressed to the military and, and administrative uh, heads and manages to acquire manuscripts from the old churches of the Caucasus. Um, he is also introduced to the members of uh, the local elite and uh, moreover, he uses the missionary networks established in the region since the beginning of the century. For instance, the Scottish Missionary Society in Karaz. Klaproth gives also information on the collection process and the book and manuscript markets in uh, Russia. And um, he acknowledges that he owes an important part of his collection to his patron, Jan Potoski. And um, it is presumably during this period uh, that he acquired manuscripts of some scholars who have, had worked in Russia, such as Bayer, Miller, Gering, Guldestan, or of uh, the interpreter of the Chinese and Manchu languages, Anton Valadikin, who had lived in Peking for 16 years. Klaproth made also some acquisitions during his travel in Europe, for instance, during his uh, Four month stay in London in 1925. He also acquired documents at auctions that had. Um, am I correct here? No. Here. He also, also acquired documents at auctions that had gradually resumed after the turmoil provoked by the French Revolution. From 1825, a significant, a significant number of private libraries of Orientalists were sold at auction, uh, also due to the cholera pandemic of uh, 1832, who entailed the death of several scholars. For instance, uh, he acquired important material on Japan from the collection of um, uh, Isaac Titsin, a Dutch physician merchant and ambassador, one of the senior officials of the Dutch East um, India Company, who died in Paris in 1812. Uh, we should rem uh, remind ourselves that uh, the Japan was uh, not open to all uh, Europeans, so the acquisition of Japanese material was particularly difficult. Uh, he even acquired the latter's uh, Titsin's uh, correspondence. Uh, Klaproth used mediators for his uh, purchase uh, toxins uh, that took place abroad. He was in contact with several uh, antiquarians and booksellers in different countries. Uh, he was updated on their new catalogs and he was placing orders. Moreover, he used extensively his network of scholars for his orders, even initiating a correspondence on this purpose. In return, he offers his services and manages to make some significant acquisitions for uh, his correspondence. Klaproth has um, systematically exchanged his own works with colleagues. He seems to take particular care of the material aspects of the co copies he sends to them. It occurs that through the copies he has given, he acquires the same copy through different channels or he acquires a collection sold in batches. He then tries to exchange or sell his duplicates via his, via his network. On the other hand, he takes in charge to sell uh, oriental manuscripts in the European market. Um, otherwise, he offers some duplicates to colleagues in recompense of their services or he donates uh, them to libraries. Indeed, another um, strategy is the exchange with different libraries. In 1902, he tries to sell some duplicates that he has received from, from Copenhagen to the Göttingen Library. And uh, later, after Wilhelm von Humboldt's uh, suggestion, uh, he donates a collection of Chinese books to the library in Halle, together with several duplicates of the missionaries' work on, on China. And uh, this material will be particularly useful to Wilhelm Schott. And uh, this is a um, case of a uh, transfer of uh, material from a private to a public uh, collection. From 1814, Klaproth collaborated with the famous German publisher Cotta, and the arrangement he had made would contribute to the enrichment of uh, his collection. Uh, for his collaboration with the journal Herta and the collective work uh, Mithridates, he would uh, take on the acquisition of the necessary material that would be reimbursed. Uh, thanks to his excellent knowledge of the book market and his availability, Klaproth uh, has served as an expert and broker for purchases by particulars and libra libraries. In 1819, uh, he had been commissioned to buy some Chinese books for the Royal Library of Berlin that he had never delivered. 
and he receives a relative claim 14 years later by the chief librarian uh, Friedrich um, Wilken. A rather serious claim is made by the Academy of Science of St. Petersburg after Klapper's death. Uh, Klapper's had obviously borrowed books from the academic library, which he did not return after his departure uh, from Russia. Uh, finally, seven titles have been clearly identified. The, the case is resolved amicably. Focusing here on, Cal on Klapper's collection network, we see that different categories of actors are involved in it. Orientalists, such as Friend, director of the Asiatic Museum in St. Petersburg, or Ceiling von Kastad, again in St. Petersburg, which is a crucial node, in fact, in Klapper's network. Klapper's uh, uh, sends regular, regularly his list to them and receives material rather difficult to acquire otherwise. He also indicates some persons who could uh, be of help in this acquisition. He proposes in exchange his services for similar uh, requests. Clapper's uh, commissions also sealing uh, for uh, some purchases during his, uh, the latter's uh, journey in Europe. Uh, or in uh, 1834, um, when Sealing has returned from his travel in uh, Eastern Siberia. Clapper's uh, was also receiving packages from Francois Bernard Sarmois, a former student of uh, Sylvester de Sassy, who had been employed in Russia since 1817. Uh, in his letter, Klapros acknowledges the receipt of the items uh, sent from Russia, so we can follow the building of his collection. I will skip this. Um, uh, another um, orientalist involved in Klapros collection network is uh, Karl Friedrich Neumann, already mentioned uh, here. Uh, Neumann was a former student of uh, Klapros uh, colleague and friend, uh, Abel Remusa. So they knew each other since uh, Neumann's Parisian period. Uh, Neumann and Klapros have uh, regularly exchanged orders and uh, packages. However, Klapros exchange is also with several scholars who are not Orientalists, such as the geographer Karl Ritter in Berlin or Samuel uh, Butler, a churchman, scholar and collector uh, based in London, whose valuable library has been acquired by the Bodleian Library, or even the linguist Peter de Ponson in uh, North America, in Philadelphia. The services of the embassies are quite often used for these shipments, while an important figure for the exchanges with uh, Russia is the Baron von Merian, a Swiss diplomat in the service of Russia. The brokers may also be particulars on the move. Um, scholars such as um, Ceiling von Kastad, the geographer William Hartmann, or the Orientalist Friedrich August Rosen, Secretary of the Asiatic Society, or students such as Dr. Uh, certain Dr. Stetzler, uh, booksellers such as, such as the archaeologist Parte, the owner of the Nikolai Buchhandlung in Berlin, or military, even military, such as Hans von Yargo, a Prussian sea lieutenant who died of cholera in Paris in uh, 1832, while preparing a scientific trip to Africa. Some persons, however, are stigmatized as bad commissioners, such as a certain caller. Klapros is in contact with the heads of different European libraries and societies, scholarly societies. He acts, for instance, as a broker for Ladislaus Edlicher, librarian of the Cartoon Library in Vienna, and receives some presents for his library as recompense for his services. He's also in contact with Horace Heyman Wilson, secretary of the Asiatic Society of Begal since 1811 and later professor of Sanskrit in Oxford and librarian of the East India Company in London. Club sends his list, his list to Wilson and receives packages from Calcutta. Klapros places orders to several booksellers in Germany, in Paris, in London. Uh, I will skip all this and... Um, Klapro uh, uh, had uh, apparently some commissioners in Russia or also, uh, but this aspect should be far, further explored. Uh, he mentions, for instance, in 1812, uh, when he's in Berlin, that he had instructed the commissioner interpreter at Kyakta and the Chinese border to buy for him all the Chinese books that would fall in, into his hands. 
In addition, Klapros establishes contacts with diplomats, merchants, representatives at trading posts in Asian countries. I give two ex examples. In, already at the age of uh, 17, Klapros gets in touch with uh, the Danish amateur sinologist Murier, who had worked for 15 years in China at the Danish counter in Canton. Although the company has not Klapros request. Later, Klapros acquires some oriental manuscripts of uh, great importance via Murier. Uh, furthermore, he receives books from Canton, even for some of his colleagues through other channels yet to be identified. In 1830, Klapros initiates a correspondence with uh, Siebold, a German physician and naturalist who had worked at the Dutch factory in Nagasaki and has managed to, had managed to put together an excessive Japan collection. Apparently, he expressed his interest in purchasing some Japanese material. Uh, Zippold proposed to send him his uh, catalog, which would be prepared by a Chinese whom had uh, who ha had worked for him uh, for several years and uh, had then moved to the Netherlands. However, he warns that he should have the prior agreement of the Dutch government and that he possesses a limited number of uh, duplicates because he had to hand over most of them to the Japanese government. A significant part of these exchanges is carried out by the, by the Rothschild House, established in the late 19th century in Frankfurt. The firm has uh, rapidly expanded and new branches were established in Vienna, London, Paris, uh, since um, 1817, and uh, Naples, under the direction of the founder's sons. In order to ensure the highest possible degree of speed and secrecy, the Rothschilds set up their own courier system using horses, carriages, carrier pigeons, and ships for transport. After 1824, the Rothschilds network is used by Klaproth for payments, but also for his commission. Indeed, the network had expanded even outside Europe to include the so-called agents, usually other bankers with whom particularly trusting business relationships were maintained. We know the name of their agent in St. Petersburg in 1835, a person named Gasset. In his exchanges with uh, Wilson in Calcutta, Clappers uses the services of her yes fair merchants, uh, brokers and ship owners in Le Havre. They were accepting commissions for books and subscription, subscriptions for journals. The eldest of uh, the three brothers, the geographer Jean-Baptiste Eries, was Klapper's collaborator. In 1834, when Eries was visiting his family in Le Havre, that is here in this pavilion on the right, um, Klapper writes to him in order to get some information on a lost package from Calcutta, which, however, had arrived in Bordeaux. Uh, this was, in fact, a package sent by Wilson, uh, that uh, did not reach uh, its destination. Thus, in the early 19th century, the trade of books and manuscripts was linked to the financial and business activities of European companies, both in Europe and in the extra-European world, and used the uh, imperial uh, networks. Clapper's uh, collection network... I'll conclude. <laughs> Clapper's collection network includes different European countries and extends to Asian lands and even to North America. Different kinds of actors are involved in these long distance exchanges where the scholarly milieu meets with other social universities and the informal and personal networks maintain an important role. These exchanges are embedded in economic and political re realities. The contextualization allows to understand how these realities interact interfere with the circulation of material and to examine the overlapping between different actors and the interplay between personal aspirations, institutional logics and objectives and imperial um, politics. And to conclude, Klapros case opens up a series of questions about the transnational cross-cultural and global network of factors and their involvement in the acquisition process and the construction of uh, oriental connection in Europe. Uh, it thus challenges the national and the Eurocentric framework, uh, pointing out uh, complex uh, dynamic and uh, entanglements between the local and the global, and invites to reconsider our current understanding of Orientalism. 
Moreover, his case allows to grasp the mutations that take place at the turn of the 19th century and uh, to consider the continuity structures in the collection practices and the eventual coexistence and invites to reconsider the idea of a strict break between the so-called free scientific and scientific orientalism. Thank you for your attention.